Hello, it's Andrew. Welcome to Atomo. Today is Monday, October 17th. There's a few things going on in the world I'd like to take a look at. Uh, we're looking at the UK right now, and the question here with the UK is Brexit or not to Brexit? So with the changes that are happening, some of the trend lines that we're looking at is if we take a look at uh, the new King Charles, then do, I'm just doing some research and looking at what he has been up to through his tenure. And he does have a lot of connections with the global elite. There's a lot of um, kind of earth friendly UN connections. Uh, even he has in his eating habits, he takes, I think, a couple of days a week where he doesn't eat meat. He does talk about the sustainability of that and trying uh, himself to be a more sustainable citizen. And even after some more uh, research, and there's quite a bit of it where he brings up, uh, there's a lot of information about how he's worked on global climate projects as well so for a lot of you who are arriving at this channel and, and spending your time here you probably know this already uh, well what he said when he was becoming you know, king through the process and he gave gave a speech it sounded like you saying okay all that stuff that i used to do i can't do that anymore uh because i've got this new station that i have to manage it has a kingdom now and has to look to the the health of that but this is where the skepticism starts to come in uh how much of that is really what he intends to do is he really going to you know, follow what the needs of the people are and what's best for Britain and I'm going to call it the colonies I can't recall offhand what he I think he says overseas or there's, there's some, some term he uses to call us the colonies but of course it's a lot more softer than just saying the colonies uh, so we're looking at uh, with the new chancellor in the UK, reversing a lot of the trust tax uh, changes that she put into play that looks like they're being uh, deleted. We also have to think about how much time perhaps does Prime Minister Trust have in office. There was a second meeting with the King that she's had. And from what I heard from some uh, channels, that when Boris was in play, he did meet with Queen Elizabeth quite regularly. And through those meetings, they were closed door meetings. There was a comment made, oh, I wish we had transcripts of what happened during those meetings. Because I think it might have been once a week uh, for an hour where he had a, an audience with the Queen. And so what we suspect there is that they were planning on, you know, how to better the United Kingdom without the connection to Europe that seemed to be potentially dragging things down. You're getting into the quagmire that is Europe, into the fiscal union. The fiscal union doesn't give you a lot of leeway because you, you, Ursula and her tools, uh, if you don't do the right things, then, you know, Big Mama is going to give you a spanking. It's going to use tools, and those tools may hurt. Just talk to Hungary and Poland, for example. And so by connecting with Europe, they would put themselves back into the legal and fiscal framework structure, potentially, I'm trying to think this out a bit further as to what's the gain to, so there's a, a switch here, you know, stay more UK and be more independent or connect back to Europe in the ECB. It feels like it's now starting to slide back to with Europe and the ECB side of the house.
The question here, because we saw with the UK pensions falling apart, is how much leverage debt instruments that are in play that are potentially getting vacuumed up by the Fed, the Fed right now is while raising rates is draining the euro dollar market the the dollars that are offshore outside of the united states but we're looking for indicators that as these dollars start to flow back uh, due to the rising interest rates and making it more palatable for that money to uh, flow elsewhere then as banks once that capital starts to reduce because banks use a lot of these assets and they lever these assets to create additional assets and liabilities. One can be, you know, in indebted corporations or, or entities or countries that want to take on uh, higher debt loads into higher risk, depending on what projects or things that they're working on. And that comes at a higher value for the people who are risking that asset that collateral to do this and as we take money out of that market these highly leveraged instruments then have to unwind and the calls get put out for them because there's no longer the underlying capital to support that you know big pyramid there's like a, a the upside down pyramid where i got my my core money but as the credit and in other instruments credit default swaps and whatnot flow out there's a lot more of them, but if you if I take one dollar out of the foundation, that could be up to maybe depending on the leverage amount. You know, I back when I was younger, it was about nine to one, nine to one was the ratio, and it could be a lot more than that, 30, 40, even in the Canadian markets here. Sometimes I heard, well, it's effectively unlimited. They can do what they want. Uh I don't understand all the <laughs> actuarial formulas and risk management uh, things that they're doing and all, because you can always hope that they're doing that and then not, uh, not putting us into a position where there's enormous risk that's in the market right now. Uh, so that's, that's something to think about the UK. What's, what's happening in the UK? To Davos or not to Davos? That is the question. Uh, we'll see that unfold. I don't have any any predictions on that. I do have my hope is that the UK can find their way through, or are they going to join perhaps if there's space in whatever's happening with what Jerome Powell is doing, but then that means are the UK banks wanting to go along with the new way that Jerome Powell is perhaps orchestrating the new financial global markets, or are they very much old school European banking industry? I'm, I'm thinking it's more of that, uh, that they're going to lean towards and try to save you know, their side, their team, for example. So see how that plays out. In other news, a lot of stuff going on in Haiti right now with the with the protests that are happening. Even here in Canada, there are some of our military jets are landing in Haiti and providing some levels of support. So I've been trying to determine, okay, well, what's happening here? A th an opinion and thought that I have is one is these are our pet governments. I can say our as in I'm taking the stance of I'm government of Canada and I've been supporting Haiti for a long time because they're one of the poorer nations in the Western Hemisphere. So there's a little bit of, oh, they're there. We have to take care of you. Uh, you, you need our help. You know, I'm more of a you know, let the country go to down the lines of what they need for self-determination uh, as long as it doesn't create catastrophic systemic risk to other systems that are in play. 
So the other system that's in play on that island is the Dominican Republic. So in the Dominican Republic is about, you know, by and large, a citizen in the Dominican Republic is about nine times richer than a citizen in Haiti. The other aspect to look at it is if there's contagion within Haiti and unrest that spreads and starts to move over to the Dominican Republic side, then, you know, I, I, I kind of equate it to a Martha's Vineyard thing. How much of the Dominican Republic is Martha Vineyarded? Uh, and what I mean there is these are pet properties and places for lifestyles of the rich and famous of you know western powers the collective west that wants to use dominican republic as just a place to go get away have some fun what we don't want are those folk from haiti getting upset and looking over to the other side saying hey there's a lot of stuff over there perhaps we can just go over there and take it and it's like oh my god communism 2.0 we can't have any of that so if we have to put the screws to whatever uprise in haiti is happening we're going to put the screws to it and get it back into a a government that's going to help maintain order so that we're going to keep the as much of pristine as it is in the dominican republic we're going to keep that the way that is uh, we don't want to have all that running, all that mess running across the island and you know, disturbing my Martha Vineyard pet locations. So that's, it's just a hunch. It's just an opinion. Um, we'll see how that plays out. So have a good start of your week and I'll see you in the next video.